Hey guys, Tab here with Real Michigan Anglers. Today we're going to talk about my favorite bass fishing lures. Primarily I fish for smallmouth bass in the river, so most of this is going to pertain to smallmouth specifically in the river, but I do a decent amount of largemouth fishing as well, both in the river and in lakes, uh, so we're going to have some things about that as well. So there are loads of bass lures on the market, and I'm going to show you my favorite ones that I've caught the most and or the largest fish with. And I'm going to start with crankbaits and then go into spinners and then go into soft plastics. Alright, I'm going to start things off with the lure that I've caught my personal biggest smallmouth bass with, which is the Excite XB1. The chartreuse with blue back is the one that I caught my personal best smallie on. Uh, I also have caught some tank walleye and my first steelhead on this lure. Uh, in fact, it's this one right here. This is the actual lure here that I caught my personal best smallmouth on. Uh, it's since been mutilated and no longer functional, but I kept it as a reminder of what color it was so that when I got more, I could uh, get the right one. And now at this point it's just a trophy. Um, I caught my best smallmouth on this. I also caught my first river steelhead on this. Um, as well as some nice walleye. And the first gar I ever hooked into was on one of these. So this is a great all-purpose lure. But smallies love square bills and I think this is the best square bill on the market. Um, put this one back on my trophy shelf here. So these are the two colors I've used. I've caught nice fish on both colors. The chartreuse, you know, I love chartreuse lures in general. Um, but this, uh, this is the sexy shad? Citrus shad. This one is the citrus shad. And I've caught some really nice fish on this one as well. Um, I can't wait to toss these guys in the springtime. These are going to catch me some nice fish. Whenever I can't get my hands on the Excite XB1 or I need a budget friendly option, I like to pick up these Storm Arashi uh, square bills. These things work great. This color is my favorite. Um, this one's not bad as well. I've caught fish on both. Uh, I've got a couple other ones here. You can see they've got some other good looking colors. There's different sizes and they come in silent or rattling. I prefer the rattling. Um, rattles are always better in my opinion. Uh, but these are nice, solid, durable, good quality square bills. Uh, that Usually they're in the $5 range, but a lot of times you can find them on sale for like $3.50, $3.99, something like that. So whenever I see them on sale, I'll pick up a few of these. My next favorite hard bait for bass is this uh, Blaze lipless crankbait. They come in a few different colors, but for whatever reason, this cheap lipless crankbait that usually runs in the $3 range uh, is far better than any other rattle trap or, you know, name brand lipless crankbait. I've caught a lot of bass on these things in this particular color black back, orange bottom, chartreuse sides with a little bit of green and blue in the face. This thing just makes the fish bite. It works great. Another crankbait that I catch a lot of bass on would be the Rapala Husky Jerk. Um, the size 10 normal Husky Jerk is a good cheap option. They're usually like five or six bucks. Um, you can get these jointed ones for just a little bit more usually. Um, this particular one you can see it's heavily used. I mean it's pretty grimed up but there's tooth scrapes in here from pike and a lot of the paint on the top is just missing at this point. But I've caught so many bass and pike on this lure. Um, but tons of smallies. Smallies love especially these jointed husky jerks. Uh, the action on these things is phenomenal um, and they come in an array of sizes for different depths so you can target them where they're at depending on the situation. 
Another lure I toss often, especially if I'm trying to target bass specifically, is the Rapala X Wrap. Uh, these are XR eights. I throw eights and tens generally. Um, the action on these is great. They suspend, and uh, when you twitch them, they're very erratic. Um, fish love that. I do good on a, a steady retrieve or a slow retrieve with twitching or trying to dead stick them and just give it the occasional twitch. Um, my two favorite colors here are the clown and the hot steel. These things are a little on the pricey side, but the action is worth the price. And with these particular ones, they're pretty durable. Not like the shadow wraps that I often use, which are pretty vulnerable to damage. Uh, these are a good reliable thing to have in your tackle box for all sorts of fish species. I also catch a lot of bass on these, and I honestly don't even know what they are but I got a bunch of them in bulk and some of them are suspending and some of them are floating but these things just have a crazy erratic wobble action and a lot of times what I do is I just throw these out right into the current on the opposite side of the river and just let it drift and give it a few twitches and they almost always smash it like right next to the bank um, and if not I'll you know bring it back in and a lot of times they'll come and grab it on the retrieve um, the thing that makes these good is the wobble's really tight. It's almost like a square bill where you just, you know, when you're reeling it in, you can feel that really tight wobble on your rod tip. Uh, so you can feel with every reel the, the lure moving at you. Um, when you can feel that, that's a good sign that that lure's putting off lots of disturbance in the water, and the fish are going to notice that. Alright, so let's talk about spinners. My personal favorite spinner for bass is the Meps Agila in pink, size 4 uh, or 5. Um, threes catch fish too, but I find that the big bass are biting the size 4s and the size 5s. Uh, these have a gold blade on the back, which personally I'm a big fan of gold over silver in most conditions. I just think it works better. Uh, catches the fish eyes, fish's eyes better in the situations that I fish typically. Um, this one's got the single hook. I get them in the trebles too. These are honestly a little hard to find sometimes, so I just you know get them whenever I can, uh, and I always will slay fish on these until I lose them. Another fantastic spinner for smallmouth bass would be the Meps Black Furies. Uh, for bass, I like to use threes and fours, um, and the number three yellow dot has just caught me an absurd amount of smallmouth bass. Um, I've caught lots of largemouth on these two, um, but the number three yellow dot is probably my number one pick for bass, and then number two would be the orange dot. Um, number four. In deeper water, I'm throwing the fours. In shallow water, I'm throwing the threes. Um, I've caught more probably on the threes, but I've caught bigger ones on the fours. And I've caught a lot of really nice 18, 19 inch bass on the maps, threes and fours. From my childhood fishing, on the Looking Glass River, this was my number one lure right here. The Meps, Gold Blade, Black Body, Yellow Dots. Um, this one is a size 9. That size through like size 6 is what I was throwing a lot in the smaller river. Um, and fish just eat these up. These are just, if you want to go out and catch a ton of bass, this is the lure. Uh, this isn't always the one I catch big guys on. But if you want to just get out and catch some, this is easily one of the most productive bass lures you can toss. The other most productive bass lure that I love to use is this rooster tail, gold blade, fire tiger. It's got the orange, yellow, and green going on, a little green skirt. Uh, these come in a red hook version that has a little red on the blade as well and that is um, probably my absolute favorite 
but this is basically the same thing. These things are like magnets for smallmouth bass. Um, so, again, I don't catch monsters on this all the time. I have caught some really nice ones on the rooster tail. Um, but if you're looking to just go out and catch a bunch of smallies, maybe take a kid fishing and have a good time, these two guys right here. You can't have a favorite bass fishing lures video without talking about soft plastics. Most bass fishermen are throwing soft plastics the majority of the time, um, in my experience. Uh, my absolute favorite for smallmouth bass is the Salvage Baco Scrappy Swimmer. Uh, I caught a hog 19 incher on this in the Green Pumpkin uh, this past year, as well as many others. Uh, I'm also catching walleye and pike on these things, and uh, this particular color catches rock bass like just madness. The rock bass just smoke this thing. Um, I caught so many rock bass on this um, when I first started tossing it, and I was experiencing a lot of short bites, so I started throwing a stinger hook on. If you take a look at this, I've got the uh, hook clipped through the eyelet here, and then just running down further to the back because they're biting this tail they're biting down here you know they're not getting the whole thing in their mouth every time certainly I get them on this hook occasionally but the stinger hook is super helpful for finicky biters um, or some of the smaller fish like rock bass but I'm talking about tank rock bass that I've caught on this rig I use them with just you know a regular quarter or eighth ounce uh, round ball jig I made this one myself. The paint's a little messed up, so it's got a funky tip on it. Um, and then these uh, walleye style that are designed to wobble a little bit more. Um, both of those work fantastic for all sorts of bass. You're not a bass fisherman if you don't throw a plastic stick worm. And here I've got my Salvage Bait Co. Savage Sticks. Um, these are a 6 inch worm six, eight, four, whatever, tomato, tomato. Six is a really good size. Um, anything bigger than that, I don't know. It's not looking like natural forage in my opinion, but um, I usually run these guys with a worm hook, um, like an EWG extra wide gap or uh, just a regular worm hook, whatever. Sometimes I just toss a circle hook in there and call it good, but I like using this because you can and get it to set to where it's pretty weedless um, and I didn't rig this one up real great but something like that uh, a lot of people also just put a hook through the middle like a circle hook or you know any sort of hook really and you know give them a little wobble or just let them fall like that but these things have yeah lots of action very wobbly uh, little current in the water kind of makes them do this thing but they slow really they slow they fall really slow so when you know you throw these in the water they hit and they just kinda shimmer down and the fish you usually attack them right as they're falling um, I don't really catch fish on a retrieve with these you know I'll hop them and give them some action and sometimes that'll pick up a fish on the way back doing that but almost always I just see a spot where I think a bass might be and I throw this at that spot it hits the water and within seconds I have a bass on so the stick worm is a solid option if you're trying to pick up largemouth or smallmouth bass. Another soft plastic is the crawfish imitation. There's kind of two types in my opinion. There's the ones that have big flappy claws and there's the ones that have like the skirted like a tube style. Um, for the clawed kind I've got these uh, Selvage Bait Co. Chaos Claws. Um, these ones have a crazy good just flopping action to the claws themselves so these work great on a slow retrieve um, generally when I'm using these it's not really for that it's more of a uh, on a shaky head and I throw it out and hop it around that kind of thing uh, but once I started using these ones and realized how much action the claws had uh, when retrieving um, these kind of became my favorite um, as far as the clawed variation go. So like I said, I, uh, I like to use these with a shaky head jig. Um, so this is a shaky head jig here. 
there's a screw that you just screw the bait onto and once it's in position you put the hook through but these claws right here these are the reason these things are great like they have these nice solid ridges on the side that are catching the water and they just they flap it looks like um, some of those deep sea creatures you see on like nature videos where you know their their fins are all frilly these things just look super alive so because of that action uh, they also make a good trailer for you know spinner baits and things like that um, I'll also throw them on just a regular old jig head and just hop them around looks like a crayfish you know escaping a predator or looking for food or whatever another common way to throw your craw imitations is on like a football head jig with like a skirt and the weed guard this is great for in lakes and rivers uh, rocky areas but you can kinda work around weeds with your weed guard it's not gonna get hung up a lot but this itself even without the trailer or the soft plastic on the back pretty much looks like a crayfish uh, so generally what I'm trying to do with these is match so like this would be good with a green pumpkin you know or slight contrast so like a brown or a darker like orange or black even works good with this um, but just play around with matching different skirted jig head colors to different colors uh, craws to try and imitate what the crayfish in your area at that time actually look like so if the crayfish are looking green you're fishing green if they're looking brown you know find brown ones uh, if they're looking real black or they've got red claws or whatever blacks and reds mixed in in this combination um, and that's another deadly option for the smallmouth bass and largemouth bass my favorite soft plastic crayfish imitation is the tube bait uh, I have two particular ones that I really like to use uh, the first is these zooms these are bigger size this is they call it the super salty tube 3.75 inch um, these are my two favorite colors so kind of a green pumpkin deal and they call this like a kitchen sink or like a clear uh, I don't remember what zoom calls it but just that clear with sparkle uh, a little bit of blue hue to it uh, but these things are great and I use these with something like this so if you've never used one of these before uh, you see the hook comes out the back here uh, and there's actually a jig head in the middle and I'll show you how that works here um, with this other one so I'm using jigs that look something like this something with a big heavy weight on it because uh, I want these things to fall hard and when I uh, you know when I'm giving it action with the rod tip uh, this big heavy weight's just going to shoot up and shoot down, shoot up and shoot down. So I really like the big heavy weight for these larger size craw tubes. But with these things, you just stick them inside the back of the tube and you feed it all the way through until the jig has made it all the way up here. And I, you can actually see the, uh, the part where you tie the fishing line on. You just pop it through like that just got to break it through and then it just sits right on the outside there you tie on to that and use those uh, if this gets destroyed you can pop another one on there um, but try to find a hook size to where it makes it all the way out to the back and sticks up a bit like that um, and the action on these things makes fish bite they love it another favorite of mine is the Z-Man TRD tube. The reason I like these ones, they're a smaller size, um, but they're very neutrally buoyant. Um, and if you had a weightless rig and just a hook, it would float on the surface and maybe just kind of slowly fall, almost like a suspending crankbait. Uh, but it's not a crankbait, it's a soft plastic and it's got loads of just wiggle. Um, the Z-Man stuff, their plastics are a totally different type of plastic. They got a cool thing going. Don't mix them with your other soft plastics because it will just melt everything. So keep them in their own package. Um, I've lost 
a whole box of soft plastics by throwing some Z-Man stuff in with there. So, be warned about that, but these things catch fish. The action is great. Because they are neutrally buoyant, a lot of times I like to use them with a tiny little, just this is a steelhead jig, like what you would put a wax worm on, or a spawn bag. Um, and it's just a tiny little jig, it's like a sixteenth or a smaller uh, size. So when I throw these, um, this hits the water and just slowly starts to sink down. So what I do is I throw it just up river of a hole that I'm targeting so that by the time it drops about halfway into the water column, it's like getting into the good part of that hole. And then it's just going to slowly drop down. And if I feel it hit bottom, I just twitch it. It brings it back up a little bit and it slowly drops back down. And the fish can't stand that. It just makes them eat it. Um, the other way I fish these is with a Ned Rig jig, and that's what's actually recommended on the package. Um, the Ned Rig jig, you put the hook through the middle, and it sticks this nice little flat surface. So when the, when these hit the bottom, they do just stand right up, and then these um, little leg imitation things are just kind of flopping in the current looking like that and I catch a lot of fish with this just sitting on the bottom completely still they just they see it they smell it they see that little flapping stuff going on in the water and they can't help themselves so a few different ways you can rig these things up but the neutral buoyancy makes them just fantastic There's lots of other bass fishing options out there. A lot of people like throwing top water and some other things that I don't really do a lot. If you look at the board behind me, there's a bunch of stuff back there that catches bass. I've caught bass on most of the lures that you see back here. Um, bass are predatory. They are uh, territorial. Uh, they get aggressive. And they like to smash things that come near them out of aggression. So you can go out with just about any sort of reasonable bass lure and have a good chance of catching some bass. There are loads of great bass lures on the market and every bass fisherman has preferences of their own depending on their local conditions and whether they're fishing rivers or lakes, shore fishing, boat fishing, uh, what time of year it is. I fish totally different lures for bass in the spring than I do in fall and summer and winter are even completely different still. So just get out there and experiment. Toss lures that look like things that you think a bass would eat. Um, mimic natural forage, things like that. And you might think, well, some of those things that you were showing me don't look like natural forage to me. Like these guys, for example, you know, at first glance, this doesn't look like a fish or, you know, an aquatic creature of sorts. Um, but in fact, these look just like painted turtles, little baby painted turtles or little baby snapping turtles that are usually black. And one time my buddy actually caught uh, on a yellow dot, number three, a nice smallie, and we pulled it out of the water, and there was a snapping turtle inside of its mouth that was yay big, maybe double the size of this number three, and it was all black. And I realized at that point, this guy just ate a turtle and then saw this lure and thought it was another turtle. So don't overlook things that might at first sight seem like that doesn't look very fishy or that doesn't look like something that a fish would eat because uh, sometimes it's more about the action, sometimes it's more about how the colors appear when the bait's moving underwater, sometimes it's more about the smell, and uh, generally it's more about the presentation. But um, get out there, experiment. Remember that weird colors like chartreuse and orange uh, trigger a fish's aggressive nature more so than its hunger. Uh, and those kinds of things can work really well in addition to more natural looking things like a crawfish bait uh, or a spinner that mimics a minnow, um, that kind of thing. I hope this helps you catch more bass and have more fun out there on the water. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, and check out some more of my videos. Thanks.